Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I have Michael Brave, Jayhawk Jensen here. We're going to talk about week 12 of the uh, Survivor Pool, maybe talk a little bit about 13. Um, so I'm sharing my screen right now, and just to kind of give you a summary of where we've come to at this point. So uh, uh, Mike uh, played very aggressively in the first couple of weeks, and, uh, you know, the, the Survivor gods were just not on his side. He played to win, and... Uh, you know, doesn't matter what point you go out, you know, if you don't, if you don't win the tournament, you don't win the tournament. So, uh, so <laughs> better made, early than late. Yep. So he made some good plays and it didn't work out. So, uh, I played, uh, several, several, uh, entries in Circa. Those went out relatively quickly and I was left with two, uh, two pools, one of which busted the week before. And I was left with one which had doubles that was going on since week nine it started with 8,200 people, um, and we got an incredible leverage situation, which we had set up set up for weeks before, and uh, I'll go over that, and uh, it just didn't work out for us. So uh, I'm going to go over that. I want to talk a little bit about Sklansky Bucks in general and, and how you're supposed to play Survivor and how you're supposed to look at this, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll continue on. So for those of you who have seen, seen the screenshot, this was what it looked like in my pool through week 11. So they were down to about 60 people left from 8,200, 8, and we were going into, you know, doubles in week 12, and we had set up a situation where, um, and now I'm going, looking at week 12 here, where, um, it, has to, it has to be somewhere, uh, team left pool-wide picks. Yeah, I don't even think it, results summary? For week 12. Okay, there it is, right, right, yeah. okay. So it turns out that Denver, excuse me, Detroit was the biggest favorite on the board, and we were the only one to have them available. So uh, we use them. That's my that little one guy, D D D E T one, the eliminated. That that means that's us. Okay. So we played them, and we also had the opportunity to play Kansas City, who only seven out of the sixty people had available. Um, and so we played them, and they advanced. So as as luck would have it. We finally, in the last couple of weeks, and this come this past week, we ran really, really well with the chalk busting. So, um, Tennessee, thirty-seven of the sixty people took Tennessee. Um, uh, they 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 advanced. Twenty-three people though took Minnesota, and fourteen people took New England, and they busted. And that's just the way it goes, you know. Like we finally ran hot with the with the eliminations. But we just couldn't survive. Uh, the, the people that had Philadelphia available took them. Indianapolis took them. And so what we would have right now is 23 people left. Uh, that is all that is left. Uh, and to show you what what what, what uh, we had uh, available to us, uh, like going into this week, actually, let's let's pull that up right now. And I'm sorry to just to cut you off a little bit. You know, I just had to kind of vent this. It's only only an accident that I even decided to do this. This is do, my favorite. This is my favorite thing to do. Is a little is, bit tilting to show how great I played and it didn't work out. Something like that, right? But but no, no, no. This is the worst because now we're looking even ahead. Okay, so so. Like in week this I don't do. Usually I'm pretty good about cutting. Yeah, no, there. I'm like, I don't like th 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 this is the pain no, that really. So hurts. we're sitting here. This is what we had set up. So in week 13, I told you we ran really hot with 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 injuries, and now we have Jacksonville that would have been an eight and a half point favorite over over Cincinnati, and three people have them available. Mm. <laughs> one Ouch! Of, one, yeah, of, uh... one, one of them being us, um, and then Pittsburgh. Uh, Steelers, we originally thought it was going to be really chalky, but it turns out only three people have Pittsburgh available, and we would have them if we felt like it also. So, you'd have a situation where this week you have the Buccaneers, who are I think literally 100% available if I'm not mistaken. Yep, 21 of 21 have them available. So, we would also not to mention, you know, we would have like incredible leverage over everybody into this week also. But uh, that is the way the, the cookie crumbles, so to speak. Um, Wait, so who would your second team at what, Jacksonville? Jacksonville and who, and we could have put Jacksonville and Pittsburgh. I mean, like, 
How avail how available is Pittsburgh? Oh, I just mentioned only three people I've, have them available. Oh wow, that's uh, that's yeah. So yeah, even I even I would have been aware of that if I was. In so it's rough. It, it's it's rough. Not to mention the fact that in week fourteen coming up, I think we were one of two people to have New Orleans available, uh, or we could have we could have saved Pittsburgh and played them in fourteen. Oh, well, okay. How how many people have uh, New Orleans left? Yeah, let's see. Uh, the Saints four. <laughs> okay. Well, you remember what I said in like yep. week two, the path to victory is the yep. New Orleans Saints. So you, you could have helped, uh, you got that premonition. Yeah. There. And, you know, we have, uh, we always had a love, love, hate relationship with the Lions in, in, in Survivor because it wasn't too recently. It, it wasn't uh, too long ago that we were figuring out whether to, you know, to pound against them every week when they were owing the whole season. You know, they, they, they knocked me out of circle one season when I had, Arizona at home minus fourteen against the Detroit, but Detroit basically won for the opening opening gun wasn't even competitive um, as a fourteen point zero. So so what? So Dan Campbell and I have definitely a love hate relationship. Uh, but you know what? He went down fighting. He went for it on basically every fourth down. He he like fake punted from his own thirty. You know, like that was he, incredible. He definitely he definitely was not uh, was not playing to lose. But you know, Goff had a couple of fumbles, and they had a too big of a too big of a hill to to climb. Um, I uh, I have not taken a look. I mean, I have not taken a look at Circa or anything like that. You have any thoughts? Any uh, any comments? Any concerns? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll I'll brag a little bit. I I for your pool specifically, I'm pretty sure I said that I would not take Philadelphia if I were to have them. Because I would assume everyone would be doing that, yep. and that, that that's really exactly what happened. How how many had them available going into the week? So I think okay, we can 10, we can do, we can do that. Them, we right? can do that. Actually, we can do that. So hold on. Um, so we can definitely do that. So we'll go to uh, Eagles. Hold on. And this we is got, relevant. So I'll, no, I'll I know we got to go back to okay results summary week twelve. So 10 people took them. And if we are to presume now that, hang on, that nine still have them available, then I guess, I guess that means that, no, it doesn't mean that. Yeah, I felt like there were a lot that had them left. I felt like it was in the 30s or 40s. I guess I can't remember, but... The reason I thought it was a clear fade it, for this pool specifically is they are not a, pl a possible play the next two weeks. And remember, this format for Eric's pool is doubles every week. And well, let's one, well, you know what we could do? We could take a look and see the people who took Philadelphia, what their other options were. That's what we can do. Yeah. And because some people, when it comes to all things being equal, you have to pick a team. You got a bunch of three-point favorites. You have to take one of them. And the comfort for some people is I want to take the better team. Uh, for me for me personally, I I start with who who do I not need? Who do, or really who who do I think no one's gonna take? Who do I not uh, need? And then the last one is if nothing if, if everything's the same, who do I not want to lose with? And yes, I have used that as a tiebreaker before. There's certain teams that I don't like losing with. And for me, it's Seattle. I hate Russell Wilson. He's absolutely <laughs> destroyed me in these pools. Even even though uh, Russell Wilson, even though Russell, way. even though Russell Wilson's not on Seattle anymore, you still have. Uh, he, we uh, we we got knocked out of, uh, of Circa last year on him as well. Okay. Okay. So it's, it's uh, so. I just didn't like Philadelphia for this format because I, I feel like people are like, well, this thing isn't going to week 16. It feels like it feels like a loss not to use Philadelphia. Well, the mistake was no one should have had Philadelphia remaining at this juncture right. of the tournament. I, I'm not they, they, they have one loss. So if you had picked them at any other point, you would have won unless it was the week against Washington. But. For this for this format, that's that's why it's very important to be very well versed with the rules and the what the reality of the pool is. The reality of the pools that I play, which are mostly single picks, with over a thousand people, this thing I'm going to play for it to go the distance. Yep. When you play a double picks format, especially one in which it's eleven onward, 
I would never this, play. This was, this was nine. Like this was nine. Weeks. This was nine on. <laughs> okay, I, nine. I would never play. So Philadelphia, for me personally, Philadelphia could have been a play in week one. I never, ever, ever would have took from Philadelphia in a single pick pool, and I said that for week one because there's too many spots to use them. But if you just look at their schedule, we don't even we don't even need to know anything about how their season would go. Okay, week 10, they play San Francisco. San Francisco is a top two team in the NFC. And week 14, they're at Dallas, who is a top three team in the NFC. I don't need Philadelphia for those weeks. Oh, week 12, they play Buffalo, top two team in the AFC. Right. If, you don't, if you're not going to use them at a point where you're up to like 16, 17 picks, you're, you're going to end up not using them at all. So that, that, that's, that's the first point I wanted, I wanted to, to discuss. The second really is uh, it was very obvious. It was very obvious what you had to fade this week for doubles, and that was Minnesota, Tennessee. Yeah, New England ended up taking a very high percentage, and I'm pretty sure I said I, I, I thought New England was going to be much higher picked in circa. They were not that highly picked in this other one I'm looking at that I was in. They were 14 percent picked in doubles. In Circa, they were just straight 24% pick. Now, right. slightly different formats, but that, that's to show the quality of the play. I, I'm pretty sure I would have I I laid off of New England. I think the teams that I was leaning toward last week, luckily they all won, so I can speak of it confidently, were Denver, Indianapolis, and the Rams. I, I, I think the Rams was the best one because they were just as favorited at the start time is as, uh, as new england and they were far far less owned i think in the pool that you're in there were they like six people picked them or something like that who denver and, or the rams uh the rams not much at all actually yeah yeah, like three. Just, yeah just a lot just less than new england and they're pretty much you know picked they're they're this very similarly favored and it's really important when you're looking at we're still a ways well, away if you're well, they were, they were also less available. I mean, because everybody used them in, in week six. How, how many people have them left now? Oh, I, don't, I doubt anybody. Let's just see. Uh, yeah, because yeah, a bunch of people got through. A few people got through with them. See the Rams. Uh, oh, they, no, they were they were. That was last week. There was twelve available last week. That's the thing. I got to get to the right. I got. I mean, this to- this pool right here. I'm staring at. They had doubles and. Uh, six and 12 so this past week and there's 257 people 267 people left and 105 Ah, have the rams left dude 12 people still have the rams left they could have taken them yeah so that's and again i I, it's i think it's by sorting and the unwillingness to drop and when the the pick percentage is right there they're grabbing this data from real pools from you have you have to use that data. I, someone on two plus two asked what they should do, and I, I think I said Kansas City. They had Kansas City, so that's like a slam dunk. Yeah, uh, I said I th- I said Kansas City, Indianapolis. Um, I I feel it, if I wait a little bit longer, I definitely would have switched because Indianapolis was less favored than the Rams and Denver, but they were they're all like basically not picked, and th- those those are very big differences there when you're when you're doing doubles. The, the pick percentage was you – know, we're looking at – so this one had doubles. Tennessee, 60% picked. Minnesota, 42. Now, of course, they were much higher favored to win than, than, than the, these next set of teams. New England was 14%. I really felt like they were going to be higher, and I did say that. But then the next group from there was Indianapolis, 6% total. Denver, 6%. Rams four percent, and these are teams you just don't need. And they were very similarly favored to New England, who after it was really the highest favorited of the teams after Tennessee and um, Minnesota, and they played the team that everyone thinks is the worst. So th- those are just good things to stay away from when you got a team w- w- when you're starting to be decide between bad teams the people oh, are going right. to lean toward the ones that are playing the worst team and that's the giants everyone thinks the giants are the worst so that's why 
people lean more toward New England than the so, Rams. So let's here's let's let's talk about circuit for a second. So this is this was the Thanksgiving um distribution for for just remember for for circa there's two sets of picks right one is the the the, the i guess the four thursday friday games um and you you see the uh actually the three of them right um yeah yeah so they're they're, well, they're up here on the board uh am i missing one four or five six, four there's four games one, one team wasn't picked because of the one friday team game. one team wasn't picked right okay so you had to pick from one of these and I, I don't know what the availability was for for all these, um, but I'm 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 trying to analyze. Like, obviously, we expected something like this. Um, I, I'll tell you what pick I'm curious about. I'm curious about the um, the Jets and and the Seahawks pick, and I only mention it because I I, I have no problem with with playing an underdog. Um, but I, I would pr- prefer to have played an underdog against a team that's going to be really popular. You know what I mean? Like, I, I would, yeah. would want to get the – I know, listen, I know it's a bigger favorite and it's, like, easy for me to say or whatever it is just because I, – but, I, but just because the results and all that stuff. But I'd rather play, like, even the Packers or even the Reds, the Reds or even Washington. You know what I mean? Um, now, I don't know what their other availabilities are. It's possible these guys just spent – you know, painted themselves in the corner and all they had. Yeah, was, Washington, you know. they easily could have picked in obviously week one. But True. it seems very hard to have been, been in a spot where you took Washington. Well, we know for sure nobody took Washington and Green Bay because the that guy's Twitter he showed last week with his predictions, he, oh, showed, oh, no, he showed no Jets. Yeah. So nobody had to take the Jets or the Seahawks. They could have taken Washington or Green Bay. Every well, single and, person. And, and I mean, and listen, this Green Bay thing, I know it's like, I'm glad that Chiefs put it up earlier and saying, listen, if your only option is favorite options to take the Lions, you should probably take the Packers instead. And people are like, well, why would you do that? I mean, because th- this is this is what it is. You know what I mean? If, if one team is literally 20 times more picked than the other, you know what I mean? Like they were only a you know four to one to win the game or whatever it was. You know what I mean? That, that that's that's the that's just straight up math. You know, it's, Green Bay should have been higher picked, and the reason yeah. Green Bay being higher picked, the EV that he that he was showing last that's week it. in his predictions does not account for the value in having Detroit remaining in latter weeks. Oh my god, I didn't even and think about that. I mean, it, yeah. it do, and that and that's why you you. That's why Detroit was a team you could not pick under any scenario because you look at week 15, possibly week 18, and next week, week 14. You know, there's there's three clear plays. I mean, got week 16 against Minnesota. I mean, who knows who they're going to be starting by then. So it, it, EV does not account for – the value of the team that you're saving and, and only five and, people have Detroit, only five people have Detroit left now. Only five. And, and oh, listen, let's, let's play devil's advocate for a second. Cause the, 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 the analysis works the other way too. So even though the lions in and of themselves were not a great, you know, not a good EV player or whatever, if you had a board where you had all kinds of incredible low owned stuff that you had been saving and you could then drop them in like, in like week, two, week 12B, 13, 14, 15, you could argue that you're supposed to eat the the negative EV Lions play in the name of safety, so that you can get to those to those bombs that you could drop on other people. Um, uh, Poss- possibly, but possibly. You, you can also argue that you should just you should double triple down and go for the win in week 16 yeah. by taking yeah. that chance. Because if you get through a Green Bay and you have the and you have the elite picks, like if you have San Francisco. Kansas City and Philly for 15, 16, 17. You could definitely argue because there's there's other people that have two out of those three. Philadelphia is 80% available. So it's that's not an outlier pick, uh, availability pick. San Francisco's 12.5% and Kansas City is 18%. So if you if you're the only one with all three of them, you, you really could argue either way. I don't I don't know what I would argue for. You know, it, it really, it really would come down for me the value of having Detroit remaining for those other weeks that I wouldn't need those teams. And 
do I really want to have Detroit? And for week 15, let me look at it really quickly. The answer is uh, it's tough because half the people have New Orleans and you really don't want to take them. So I guess the, the top teams in 15 are San Francisco, Miami, Kansas City that not many people have. And then New Orleans, Detroit Rams. So Detroit is a really, really, really good pick in circa really anything for week 15. And having Detroit would allow you to be on an unknown team without having to drop and and try fading New Orleans. So, right. now, so Detroit now, for 15 would be very valuable. Whatever, Basically, whatever EV you would eat by dropping to Green Bay – you would like you you would likely gain back by taking Detroit in fifteen at current spreads. Okay, so now I, I want to pull up week twelve again because I want to take another look at this at this week twelve B thing. Okay, um, so I don't know how available all these other teams were, but the t- and we we talked about this and we talk about this a lot. Like, and it's easy for me to say or whatever it is, and not even easy for me to say because they they happen to have lost, you know, but. They happen to have won, but I think the Titans, like, and the Patriots, like, and Minnesota, those all just had to be atrocious plays. You, you, and, and, and I know it's easy for me to say or whatever it is, but as, as you mentioned, all those guys were what, minus three and a half? Is that right? Something like that? I mean, can't, couldn't have been much more than that. Let's just take a look. Uh, 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 who was this? Tennessee was three and a half. Uh, Minnesota was three. You could have just played freaking the Colts. For Christ. Yeah, I, that's, that's why I told the guy take the Colts because that, that was that was like the that's like I, I think I said that's the lowest I would drop because no one's going to take them. It's a half a point right. for God's sake. No it, one's going to take it. It, it, ins- it literally ensures you're on a unique team, and I, I like I I like chances to scoop and if. It felt like the you, Indianapolis felt like the difference between winning the pool this week and not winning it. Like if you'd taken Denver or the Rams, and 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 this in this pick distribution, Circa was a lot sharper. I mean, the the Colts were more were just as picked as the as the Rams, and wait, no one took the Broncos. Nope. Wow, that's crazy. That was another one you could have taken. Wow. You know? it's, uh... And it's funny because again, if 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 you know, like we if we were in um, in circa, I know what would have happened this in in week twelve B, because again, I told you my friend is like really you know he's really good whatever he's really good at at, at doing against the spread stuff. He always like leans he against the spread when it's always like close or whatever it is, and he was on the Colts like in week twelve like ten weeks ago. Okay, yeah. and we were t- each time we started talking about our path, he's like. Can we take the, the Colts in week 12? I'm like, probably not, but we have to, we, I'll, I'll keep it up there. You know what I mean? Like, and, and I'm telling you that if we got to this point and we have all these three point favorites, he would have made me take the Colts. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, I would have hundred percent got through because I, I, I would have taken Indianapolis, the Rams or the Broncos. There's, 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 there's no doubt in my mind, yeah. but th- this is important stuff to look at. Yeah. The reason I wouldn't have taken the Patriots in any format, especially, you know, sharper ones, uh, several years ago, I was in a pool where we were on doubles and you had to, you had to, everyone had to take like a three or four point favorite. And someone that I discussed with who's sharp told me that they were eyeing this one. Uh, I think it was Atlanta or something like that. And that's the team that I was on. And because just because he told me that I didn't do it. Right. And, that was the reason I didn't do it. I got very lucky. That team lost, and then everybody picked them. They, they were – I ended up dropping a little deeper. I think that's probably the year, the year that I really realized I should – if you're going to drop, just go as low as possible, not just to ensure that you're going to be have a unique path, but it's really just not that much of a difference. It, looking at point spreads, because I, I – I was I wrote them out last week. We're talking about like minus one thirty six versus minus one fifty. You know, we're we're talking about giving up like you know five ish, seven ish percent of win percentage by dropping from one team to the next. That's not very much. That you, you still have, but you're, it's it's a it's a team you know for a team that's far less 
picked. Uh, so that's, I think that's the reason I didn't like New England. It just seemed kind of obvious. And I didn't hear any murmurs, you know, because I'm not in anything. But that felt like the one that was going to get a lot more traction than the other. And, and, and here at Circa, this is pretty staggering because the, the pool that I'm, the other pool, the single pick pool, they were, they were 7% picked. They went 30, Tennessee, 21, Minnesota, 7, New England, 6, Detroit. And then in Circa, obviously, you know, they didn't have, they weren't able to pick any of the Thanksgiving games, but still to be at 26%, that's, that, I, I was, I was surprised how large it was just based on what the expectation was for the average pool. The, the, really the last comment that I have is this is the stage. If you're still in, you're not close to winning yet. There's a long ways to go, but this is the, st- my, my friend's been asking me, when do I start, you know, really looking at everyone's picks and make a spreadsheet. And I, I, I said like 50 or so. This is the time where you really need to start looking at the pick availability for the pool that you're in and looking at the tendencies and, and, and the leans yeah. that the opponents remaining have done. This is the time to go for it. If you're seeing you know, certain teams being far less available in your pool than the average pool, look, look for those entries, see what they're doing, and, and then use that information to try to predict what they're going to pick in different weeks, and then just get on the other side of it. Stay off that path, and you can create some really large uh, potential EV gains. And you don't have to do anything that special. This is where everyone feels like they're close. You're not close to winning yet. Whether there's 50 people left, 20, or 10, there's still a long ways to go. It's not a poker tournament where people start discussing ICM numbers. There are no ICM numbers. No. I know usually when I'm in, at some point, I had the best entry. And mm-hmm. I had the best entry last year. No one wanted to make a deal, and we were willing to deal. But then two weeks later, we had the worst entry. And there's nothing we can do about it. And it, it, it went from we got, we got down to under 10, and it took seven weeks to get down to, you know, get down to where it was over. It, it, take, it could take a very long time. So don't get complacent. You, you're running out of weeks. E- EV does not account for what the, uh, what the, the final prize pool is going to be, uh, how it's going to be chopped. The less weeks that are available remaining, the less opportunities you're, you're, you're going to have to put yourself in a spot where there's less people to chop that baby up. Find the spots before you run out of them, because believe me, it's really hard to find them at the end of the year. And well, they're there, but you got to do some disgusting things. And the thing is with people, with players sitting out with injuries, with trying new quarterbacks, you have no idea who you're going to end up taking. Uh, gonna, last gonna... year, last year we took, we had the, the two teams. If you asked us the two weeks before, we would not have guessed either one um, two weeks before because things just happened. We took Seattle and we took like the giants or something like that. And we never would have thought that two weeks prior. I'm, I'm going to share two things. Uh, uh, two things that I've learned or reinforced this this season. Um, and then we're going to call this. Uh, I'll, I'll do a couple of announcements. First of all, guys are still in. I think there might be one person still in uh, that I know who's in the Discord or whatever it is. Feel free to post whatever it is. Um, uh, you know, we're, we'll, we'll, we'll try to help out as much as we can. The other thing is we'll be back um, for March Madness because I definitely want to win that this year. That's um, the best. Yeah, uh, it's very, very difficult. Um, and I definitely am thinking of the shot that the the two things that I want to share with you. Um, again, I, I was my, my my son, he's uh he's you know, he's graduating college now, but I said to this whenever he was really, really young, um, as well. I said, This is why I do DFS, why I do this stuff, you know, whatever it is, is that you know, the, the brain is like any other organism. Like if you if you don't use it like every day, it, it atrophies, you know? So, so I really yep. try to like learn something every day and, and, and every year or whatever. Two things that, that I, that I knew, but I got reinforced more was again, and this is why, you know, I thank Mike for coming on here to remind me of this like every single week is, is the concept that, that, you know, that if you're going to drop it from a favorite, don't just, just, just take the, the top rated team that you're dropping to because 
There's a whole pool of people that are doing the same thing and you could get an incredible edge for very little points. Like you could get, you dropped from, from the seven and the eights to the, like the three and a halves. You may as well drop to the threes and two and a halves because as we just saw this past week, you know, like, like the, in, 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 in week two B of uh, whatever 12 B of Circa, you have an incredible, you know, leverage for not that many points. That's the one thing. And I say sort of knew this instinctively last year, but every week we, we talk about it and we just saw so many examples of it. So I'm going to pay closer attention to that going forward. And the other thing is that, and this is what I talked through with my, my partner as well is, is when you're, when you're looking for leverage and you're looking for, you know, when you want to like take your shot and, you know, when you want to like drop, you know, bombs on people and whatever, remember that, that the earlier in the season, that 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 you do that you might be able to get like good kind of ev leverage but it doesn't usually amount to all that much money with all those people left okay um if you could save those kind of like hammer fists for later in the season where not just the leverage could be more dramatic but also like the actual money value is that much more important um I think it's kind of worth worth doing. Um, and as I mentioned, I don't I don't even want to know like the leverage that we had over some of these picks and some of the people that took Green Bay had over the Lions people. I mean, that's like legit, like 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 fifteen thousand dollar difference. Some of those people, you know what I mean, had over the other people in circle. You know, so so that that's that's the other thing that I had. But but be I I, I hinted at it, but don't wait too late because when I made that comment about at the end of the season, you don't know who you're going to take. That's true. What that means is a lot – there's a lot more teams that are taken at the end of the season than, than you realize. Yep. People are saving teams that are taking the biggest favorites. You really want to – you really want to have your, your bombs by, like, week 16. 17 is off – you know, 17, 18 are just fine, but there's going to be some random team that right now is a pick em that's going to be a nine-point favorite, and – that won't be the only one. And you're, what you're going to have is there's, there'll be, there might be eight or nine different teams picked. The best time to drop it is when you know what people are taking. That's a good and, you know, th- that is so important because, like, in one of these upcoming weeks, like, we, uh, the New Orleans week is a good one. And, I'm, again, I'm not saying I would, I, I'm, I would not take New Orleans. It's, it's very tempting because I said I would save them for week 15. But the way the season's panning out, a lot of people have not used them and they might, you know, they could be 45, 40 to 50% pick. And that's why it's important for that week. Like if you somehow have San Francisco or Miami, that would be quite a drop because most people are going to be on new Orleans, the Rams, or, you know, some other team. Whereas in the latter weeks, when things start opening up and there's, and there's a bunch of random teams that, become become a six point favorite now there's nine teams picked um whereas in, in these other weeks maybe only three teams will get picked a lot, the spreads really open up teams could be some teams gonna be a 20 point favorite and some terrible teams gonna be a touchdown favorite ha- it happened last year in ours where we were picking teams that two weeks before they were pick them and now and now there's seven eight nine point favorite just because of playoff implications and the other teams call you know called it quits for the season i did a um this will be the end. I, I did a uh, a podcast with uh, the LOLZ podcast where with uh, Pete Overzet at, at Brick, uh, Brian Hooper. They were one of the things we were getting into it about is they were asking, you know, why do why do touts come on? Why do why do people do content? Why do, was it because of this? It's because of this. It's because they have no money left from playing and they want to make more money. And I said that. Um, well, it depends on the people, but to, to do this type of stuff, you really, I think you just have to like it. You just want to do it. Uh, yeah. And it's really, well, I'm getting there in a second. And he says, uh, it's, well, it's got to be like some degree about the money and stuff like that. It can't be because, you know, it's, uh, you don't make too much money doing this. And, and I would like to shout out, you know, like, uh, you know, Mike, Mike is on here. I, I didn't pay him anything. He never wanted anything. Um, and, and I, you know, we, we don't charge for any of this. Like this is, I mean, I put this on my true DFS thing, but it's like not even like a premium thing, you know, whatever it is. We do this really because we just kind of like it. Uh, and we just, kinda, like, mm-hmm. we, we like it. We, we talk through it, you know, and, and, but I will say this, that, that if, if at any point, 
you know, Mike like post anything on Twitter about the charity he wants you to be a part of or any cause or whatever, anything and whatever. I would, I, I would, I would support that, you know, um, just because again, like it's, uh, it's, uh, it is, it is time out of, out of everybody's, out of everybody's schedule and whatever it is. And he's always freaking on time, like to the three second mark, you know, whatever it is. And I really appreciate it. Um, I appreciate that, Mike. Uh, we'll be back uh, for March Madness and uh, good luck, everybody. Have a, Hey, Hey, Mike, Merry Christmas. You too, Eric. Yeah, take it easy.